But in the UK in 2008, there were 1.4 billion losses to the industry caused by piracy, and 39,000 jobs. And I'm including all of the technicians, the software developers, the people who work in film, the people who work um, in any of our creative industries. Um, so it's a serious problem. It's a problem that has to be addressed because our industry is slipping away from us as we speak. And things aren't getting better, they're getting worse. Um, the last stat from this report, I'll just say that in Europe in 2008, both physical and digital piracy caused £10 billion in revenue to be lost, more than 185,000 jobs to be lost across Europe. Serious figures. Um, we want to actually see the act in place. We want to see the graduated response there. And it is a graduated response. There's been a lot of hype in the press about um, strangling uh, consumers' broadband and then cutting off and blocking websites. It's a letter. Most people get one letter, which actually, they talk about us, the industry, educating the consumers. This is part of the education. This, what you're doing, is wrong. Most people know that. They need reminding. And I think that there's nothing wrong with a letter. Uh, the problem is that then they can immediately appeal and uh, then we get into an actual um, very difficult situation. And only the egregious pirates are going to get the site, the site blocking. I mean, it's only the people that really are making money out of the people that I represent. But just to finish, Chris, I would just comment on the Secretary of State's um, announcement today. Um, not a lot of time to digest it, but it, it looks like it's a review. It's not a review of all of the DEAs looking at these site blocking uh, provisions. Um, I think he's, he actually said that site blocking can play a role in preventing illegal downloading. We welcome that. Um, we've got to keep, as I say, that, that we've got to keep that provision because of the figures that I read out. We need a sanction to make sure that we can stop pirates who are actually, as I said, making money out of creators. Um, they won't disable social networking sites. The uh, people will still be able to use the internet. Um, and it's just, we're looking at illegal content, that's all. And we want to work with Ofcom and we want to get to talk about the cost and we want to talk about the code and we want to be positive about this and, uh, and celebrate the work that our members do. So I pass on to Lavinia Carey, who's the Director General of the British Video Association. Thanks, Chris. Um, I'm here representing just one sector of the creative industries. Um, our sector is worth a lot of money. Um, it's uh, valued at approximately £2.6 billion. Pounds. Um, and that sounds like it's big business. But actually, the important thing about it is that it's the uh, one sector which <coughs> generates um, the largest share of uh, revenues and returns to investment uh, in film and television and other uh, video works. Um, and the important thing is that it is the sector that provides the broadest access to the public of audiovisual works. And without it, films and television programmes could not be made. Um, that isn't um, a, uh, a, a PR hype, <coughs> it's fact of life. And when deals are being done with uh, new digital services, online services, one of the things that people are looking at um, when they're doing deals with rights owners is um, the minimum guarantees and how much money can be generated uh, from the various uh, forms of exploitation of a film or television or other type of work. Um, it's true to say that um, it's the engine room of the audiovisual industry. Now, in a time of uh, economic uh, difficulty, um, we all know that uh, the government is looking at the creative industries as a way of stimulating growth for the economy. And if uh, the industries who are experimenting with a number of new services, and particularly in our business, have launched and closed a number of online services which haven't, they have failed commercially because the time is not ideal. And consumers are not ahead of the curve in terms of digital consumption of audiovisual works. Um, they're very much very comfortable with buying DVDs and going to the cinema and Blu-ray discs. Um, so whilst we may be castigated for not uh, trying out new uh, business models online, I would say that uh, some are working very well 
and there have been some notable failures. But the future is going to be extremely difficult if people who are investing in a new form of distribution can't be guaranteed um, a level playing field. Um, of what's happening to CAB clients, there's a bit of a reputational risk here, potentially, for copyright holders. Um, this is the one I wanted to leave in there, really, for you to think about. Um, when ordinary people see something as unfair, you need to have a careful think about what's going on and how you are protecting your rights. I mean, whose fault is it if standard letters are being developed on the internet to defend people against these claims that people are refuting or they just don't understand? Um, whose fault is it that a Swedish internet service provider is proposing, as I understand it, to encrypt data to protect consumers' privacy? Are you, in fact, in danger of shooting yourself in the foot?